then you, you have trouble installing dependencies or dependent packages. Or you can have the record in the package database, but you don't actually have the files for whatever reason. And that can cause trouble. Um, and with this, with the simplicity of the slash package format and the layout, it makes it very easy for anybody who wants to, to create higher level tools to manage their packages. I've got a bunch of tools that are just simply shell scripts that can install and uninstall packages. Um, and it would be easy for anybody who doesn't like the tools that are out there to create their own because everything is done in a fairly simple way. So I mentioned before registration. And for, for registration, we w hmm, sorry. <laughs> we'd like to look at other registration systems out there to get a, an idea of what a good registration system looks like. And I think DNS is an excellent example. Um, it's a hierarchical namespace. The file system is also a hierarchical namespace. With hierarchy, you have the opportunity for delegation. Um, this, you know, yahoo.com is delegated to Yahoo. We can find a file prefix, a, a, pa a path name for a directory, and delegate that. Anything within a domain name or within a directory can be co controlled by the person we delegated it to. And that really reduces the amount of coordination necessary. We don't worry that there are that there's more than one computer out there called www because they're all in separate domains, so there's no confusion, there's no collision. The same thing applies with files within a package here. If they're all in their own directories, they won't conflict with each other. Um, the one exception to that is command names. Those are all squashed into a flat namespace in by way of dollar path the environment variable. And people are used to just typing the name of the command and that'll get them the program they want. They don't really want to have to type in a full path and people type commands a lot so it's good that they should be able to do just the basement name of the command. And so we register command names too along with package names. Um, but we do not need to register header files, libraries, pretty much anything else, those, it's usually not too much trouble to find those by their full paths. And so if we do find those by their full paths, they're automatically t distinguished by the directory for the package they're in. We don't need to coordinate to keep their base names distinct. And so if all this seems vague so far, hopefully this will make it more concrete. Um, the file system layout. We have the slash package directory. Under that we have category directories like package misc. Under that we can have either more category directories or we can have um, package directories themselves. So we have package misc, package misc fd tools is a symlink pointing to the current version of the fd tools pro package. That'll be, in this case, package misc FD tools dash 2004.12.17. I like to use dates in my version numbers, but not everybody does. And this slash package spec allows for pretty much any kind of version number scheme you want, as long as it starts with a digit. Um, there's also implicit delegations. So you don't always have to use the registry for every, everything. If you own a do domain name, like in this case, scarnet.org, um, the owner of that domain publishes some slash package packages and he used, he used the package path slash package slash host slash scarnet.org slash minutils. That's a package and it's automatically delegated to him because he owns the scarnet.org domain. He owns everything under package host scarnet.org. Now within each package, We've got a variety of things. Here on the left, you see the various top-level directories within a package. Um, command com contains any commands provided by the package. Conf is the way I do um, 
configuration, I put my config files under there. Conf compile contains any compile time configuration files. Then you've got include for header files. Library is the convention that popped up instead of just lib, spell it out as library, not a big deal. Packages could even do it differently if they like, um, and there wouldn't be much problem with that. There's not really need for a unified convention, but it's kind of nice, so pretty much everybody does it that way so far. Um, the package subdirectory contains a lot of the metadata about the package, which is listed on the right here. Um, and then finally, the source directory contains the actual sources if you're building a package from source. Um, some of the metadata within the package directory is you've got an install script, which usually breaks out down into three basic steps. Compile, which creates everything within the package directory itself. Upgrade, which sets that current version symlink you see above there, and also creates the symlinks for all the command programs in so that they're in slash command and also in user local bin so that um, they'll show up in dollar path and your dollar path doesn't grow to some huge long string to contain every package on your system. Um, the last step of package install is package run which um, starts up any processes necessary to make the services of this package available on your system. In most cases, that's not really used because you might want to have more than one instance. You might want to set it up in various different ways, and so there's not really much that can be known at install time about how that should be done. And so in the vast majority of cases, package run is a no-op. Um, you've also got package sharing, which is this one's not a script it tells you how shareable these various files are so for example the source directory that's portable to any platform at least any platform that the package will run on at all um, those files are going to be the same on all those all those different platforms so you can just store one copy of that if you if you're running a heterogeneous collection of systems you can just store one copy of that source directory somehow and make it available on all the systems. Whereas the command directory or the library directory, that will contain compiled code, so that will be specific to a certain architecture OS. And so you'll have to store one copy of that for each kind of system that you're running. The package versions file tells you a list of versions of the package that's mostly so it's, it, it contains all the versions up to date. And so you can, if you're looking for version 1.2 or newer, when you're doing dependency tracking, you can look in that file. And if you see 1.2 listed, then you know that this package is at least a, as new as version 1.2. And so it should be good to use. Is that all clear? I'm sure it's, there's, yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, so this versioning where you see here the version number is part of the path that the package is installed as that means different versions go in different directories and so you can have multiple versions installed at the same time and they won't conflict with each other that's useful when you want to test a new version you still want the old version for production use you're not entirely sure you trust the new version yet, but you can put it on there in the normal way. You don't have to do any special work to put it somewhere else. And you can try it out f from there. And then finally, when you're ready, when you do know that you trust this new version, then you can update that, update that current version symlink and you'll be all set. That updating of the symlink is just a single atomic operation, and that upgrades your whole package instantaneously. So for example, there is zero risk of, OK, something on the system invoked this command, and the command had been updated already, but one of the libraries it links to hadn't been updated. So I got the new version of the command and the old version of the library, and something bad happened. Um, that can't happen here. When, when you run 
the version when you run a command you'll either get the new version or the old version and if this if the symlink has been updated then you've got the new version of everything if it hasn't you've got the old version of everything this also doesn't do anything to get rid of the old version so if some if a problem crops up later you can easily downgrade back to the old reliable version and you're all set um, there's there's no risk of damaging anything that you had before any of the code anyway um, when a package refers to its own files to make all this work it will pretty much have to use the the path that includes the version number anything within that version will refer to something else within that version um, that way something can work even when it doesn't have the current version symlink pointing to it whereas anything outside the package that depends on it would typically go by way of the current version symlink and I don't know what version it is I don't care just as long as I've got something I can use so now the process for building and installing what a package like this is pretty straightforward and it's pretty uniform for all packages um, you get yourself into the slash package directory you untar your tarball from there and actually that tarball will cre has holds the files in the paths in the tarball actually include all the category directories and everything so that you untar it from slash package and everything shows up exactly where it should be so then you jump into the directory of the package itself and from there you can just run the package slash install script and everything is magically done or if you like to look at things at a finer level of detail you can run package slash compile which will create all the files within the the package um, in my packages uh, uh, convention I use is I have a package slash own script that's included here so far it's a no op because none of my packages ne need it but the the purpose of it being there is if you need to set any specific ownership or set UID set GID bits that can go there um, that obviously would have to run as root but package compile only needs permission to write to things within the package directory that doesn't have to run as root so that's kind of nice for it won't really protect you against malicious attacks if you're installing somebody's package and it's a trojan you're you're pretty much stuck but if there are inadvertent bugs that could damage your system if they were run as root and if those were in package compile you'd be protected against those by running that part as non-root um, the package slash check also a, a no op in my packages so far but that's where a test suite could go uh, package slash build is just runs the those first three that seems like a logical set of things to tie together because those things only modify files within the package directory they never need to step outside then after that you've got upgrade version again this one is only specific to my packages I've not seen other authors adopt it so far um, that sets the current version symlink install commands installs all the command symlinks upgrade uh, package slash upgrade runs those two together upgrade version and install commands and that one is um, more commonly found in pretty much all slash package packages and package run as I mentioned before usually no op um, package elsewhere is something I threw in there thought it might possibly be useful I actually haven't had much need for it so far but it's sort of the equivalent of make desdir equals wherever it will produce a copy of the package in some other place so that you can build another copy with a different compile time configuration or however you want to do it for comparison like that maybe throw in debugging compiler flags how are we doing on time okay 
So, um, speaking of compile time configuration, 